happened that long ago? 120 years. Now wait, let me see if I got this straight. She climbed up the fireplace. The mantle. And she went through the, the meat. The looking glass. Right through it without breaking the glass. And, and you've I been came out. Oh, well, I passed through her to be precise. My head through her head. My breast through her breast. My hips through her hips and my toes through her toes. Not at all an unpleasant sensation, really, after the initial shock. Rather like being squeezed out of a tube of tooth cream. And you've been wandering around in the real world ever since. No, I've been wandering around in this world ever since. One hundred and twenty years. Yes. How come you look so young? Well, as long as I am in your world, I don't age. Well, and she doesn't either, for that matter. Oh, she's in looking glass world. Jesus, now you're telling me... I made it with a 120-year-old. Well, you care to look at it that way. Of course, I have the body of a 13-year-old. Tell me about it, you know? The way you talked and all before, I thought you were older, much older than 13. I mean, I knew you were young for your age. But... So I am. Oh, Lewis, I so enjoyed playing with your puppy. You what again? Your puppy. <laughs> it's a naughty little thing, but then they all are. Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry if I hurt his feelings when I giggled. He just... Has such a funny little pouty little mouth. Here you go with that little stuff again. <laughs> oh, but no, puppy, it doesn't talk. No, it doesn't. Back in Looking Glass World, my uncle's puppy used to talk to me all the time. <laughs> he used to say the most impertinent things. Right. Needless to say, he wasn't really my uncle. Right. But well, your puppy, it doesn't make any noise at all. No, it doesn't. I better... And now, now I shall recite a poem for you. In the garden, late at night, I found my way by candlelight Come on. to a secret place which no one knows where Stop. the giggle sleeps and the young Stop. young glows. Past the pussy willow. Stop already! What is it? You know, on this side of the mirror, you should lay up a cigarette or something. Beg pardon? After, you know. We don't go in much for poems. Oh, I see. So you don't wish to hear the rest, though? Maybe later. Look, it's nothing personal. I'm just kind of discombobulated as well. I mean, I've, I've heard some weird stories before, but like this. This is, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you, is this your thing? Is this what you do? <laughs> Not at all. I've never done it before. Christ, now you're telling me I made it with a 120-year-old virgin? Don't be silly. I've done that before. I've just never done it in a bed. Where'd you do it? If oh, behind the Times Square Coca-Cola sign in the control tower of the John Wayne International Airport in the Battles Box. Oh, oh at the World Trade Center. Oh, in twice. Twice. At Disneyland. <laughs> Slept with. Hundreds. And you, Lewis, do you, do you always use the bed? Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, once I did it in a fuzzy rug thing, it was a special. Oh, thing. how peculiar you are, Lewis! Well, be careful that your little puppy doesn't bite you. Right. Right. Listen, this was nice and everything, but I gotta. Now you're going to woo me now. Woo you? Yes. It's customary. In looking glass world, when a man has had his way with a woman that he's never met before, he proceeds to woo her, starting with passionate kisses and working his way gradually to exchange pleasantries and courteous introductions, after which they part forever. Oh, the old ways are still the best, Lewis, wouldn't you agree? Look, I don't know if I'm ready for, like you say, casualties and pleasant whatever. Everything! I'm so glad that you picked me up when you did. 
I was exhausted by the bewildering talk of that dirty woman with the shopping cart. But she did seem quite certain, however, in her prognostications about the end of the world. That's a crazy old bat. What is it that you're transporting in your in your lorry? In my what? In your lorry? In your truck? Oh, uh, hazardous waste. I'm hauling it to the dump site upstate. Hazardous waste. I once thought that referred to banana peels on sidewalks. Tin cans with jagged lids. Things of that sort. Lewis, look! 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 There's a boy brandishing a windshield wiper and expostulating with great fervor to a fire hydrant. At last, a breath of sanity in this senseless world. It's probably on angel dust. Angel dust! Angel dust! Yes, we have that in Looking Glass World, too. I once sprinkled it on a hitching post and turned it forward into a helitrope. This ain't that kind of angel dust. Oh, this wiper-wielding warrior makes me long for my Looking Glass home. Why don't you go back? Well, I can't, of course. I must wait for her. And she would never come back now. She knows full well that we would both crumble into dust as soon as we return to our rightful sides of the looking glass, so I must remain in this backwards world and do my best to forget what I've left behind. Is that why Shall we play a game of Warby Wiggle? That- what fun! Now pay attention, Lewis, because the rules are really quite simple. The object of the game being to outbox one's opponent through a carefully developed subterfuge, involving randomly chosen items from the surrounding area, place with my dad and my grandpa and they were both drunks anyway this one night I was home alone I was 13 14 and I decided I'm gonna drink a six-pack of beer you know I'll show them so I did I drank all six cans and by about the fourth can I was feeling pretty crazy and I started messing things up and knocking stuff over and I TP'd the entire place and by the fifth can, I was crying because I guess I felt bad about messing the place up. And by the sixth can, I puked on the linoleum floor in the kitchen. I went in my bedroom and I passed out. I 
later on that night, I heard my dad and my grandpa come in. And they, they were in the kitchen, and they were fighting. And then all of a sudden, I heard the door slam, and my dad's yelling disappeared down the block. And then it got real quiet, and all of a sudden I heard this big, and it scared me. So I got out of bed, and I snuck in the living room, and I'm looking around, and I see nothing. And I turn my head, and I look in the kitchen, and there's my grandpa. And my grandpa is laying there on the floor, like some kind of turtle on his back, mumbling and bumbling and trying to turn the world right side up again. And I just looked at him, you know? I was, I was a kid, what was I gonna do? I looked at him, he's laying there, he slipped in my puke, and I just looked at him! I was a kid! <clears throat> my grandpa, my grandpa, my grandpa. My grandpa, he used to play piano, you know? Jazz, classical, that kind of thing. And he must have been good or something because he was going to go on tour. But then the depression hit and he had to get a job to support my grandma and my dad. And he lost three fingers at that job. And he couldn't play piano after that. So, you know, that's my story. Was your granddad a land turtle, a sea turtle, or a mock turtle? <laughs> mock turtle, I guess. I... <laughs> yes, I thought so. <laughs> and I'm sorry I never knew your granddad, but I do know that in looking class world, he never stopped playing the piano. Yeah. Furthermore, most of the really great musicians in looking glass world have some turtle in them. You know, I don't think you're half as crazy as you make out to be. Well, I suppose after 120 years, a certain degree of assimilation would be inevitable. <laughs> would you like to go again? We can use the bed if you like. No, uh, I, I actually think that I'd rather hear your poem. Now. Lewis? You impestuous mandrill! You must put me in the proper mood first! <laughs> and, uh, tell me your name, your real name. I'm called Celia. Celia. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, <laughs> Celia. Thank you, Lewis. <laughs> Everywhere I've looked at clouds that way 